What's up, interns to executives? This is the Fish Fry, where I give you the lowdown on the next Salmon Run stage with weapon benefits, stage strategies, and general tips for maximizing your potential with Grizzco. This is for the stage rotation that's happening on September 28th, and it's being held at Sockeye Station. It features the weapons, the sploosh matic the Reflux 450, the Explosher, and the Goo Tuber. Everything at Sakai is on an incline, so making sure that all your walls are painted will help you take out priority targets. Don't forget to keep an eye towards the tower for Drizzler Balloons. And it is significant to point out how useful it is to paint these walls. You can also troll the salmonids on some of these taller walls. And don't forget that you can toss an egg from the shoreline to the top of the tower. And if you need a little extra height on a fish stick, you can hold B to get a squid surge. Also try to use corners to your benefit, but make sure you know what you're doing or else you might be finding yourself going for a swim. And speaking of corners, there are so many weird corners and walls that you can use on low tide to your advantage to troll the salmonids. A low tide is symmetrical here, so these walls and corners are on both sides. So make sure you keep your walls painted, and be careful how much time you spend on the ramp, and you might be able to find yourself with a clear. The first weapon of the Salmon Run is the sploosh matic The sploosh matic can deal a ton amount of damage quickly, but boasts a very moderate amount of ink usage. And if you're dealing with a fish stick, don't forget to jump to get a little extra height with your painting. And with its ink usage, it's really easy to take out lesser salmonids quickly, then dip into the ink to get in just enough to throw a bomb for a moz or a flyfish. I give the sploosh a matic of wall paint score of 6 out of 10. Sure, it flings that ink, but you'll never be able to reach the top of the tower wall. The next weapon on this salmon run is the Reflux 450. This weapon could be a little finicky. Full charge shots are definitely useful for taking out boss salmonids, but a half charge shot can take out Chum with a single shot. It also helps to get just a little bit of extra height on the map to utilize this weapon's range. I give the Reflux 450 a wall pin score of 6 out of 10. It can paint low to mid walls really easily, but once you have to hit something that's pretty high, it gets pretty finicky. The third weapon on this salmon run is the Explosher. The Explosher in Splatoon 3 has been updated, and it is a massive wall painting machine. It also boasts a very long range with a very high arc. And I really have to mention how good this thing is at painting walls. It also has a projectile that can go through lesser salmonids. And that's not even what makes the Explosher real special. What makes it so special is that it can take out flyfish buckets with one single shot. Also a tip with flipper floppers, try to refrain from hitting the middle of the circle. If you hit the left and right side, you'll be able to get it in two shots rather than three. Also, it helps to pre-aim steelhead bombs. And I noticed with stingers, you can hit the ground right at the bottom bucket and take it out one at a time, or if you hit them center mass, you can take out three buckets at a time. When you have the explosion and you're dealing with scrappers, try to remember that the pilot is a lesser salmonid. So if you position it just right, you can attack through the scrapper and hit the salmonids behind them. 
In this next shot, you can see a little more definitively that the shots are passing through and landing on the other side. I give the Explosher a wall paint score of 10 out of 10. I don't know if anything else will be this good at painting walls to be honest. This weapon will be a dynamic tool in getting a clear this Salmon Run. The last weapon on this Salmon Run is the Goo Tuber, which is also clipping through my feet. The Goo Tuber is one of the weirder chargers. It has enough charge to take out a Steelhead in a single shot, but not enough to take out a Quahog with full health. So if you're dealing with a Quahog that's been pretty damaged, you can bet that you'll take it out in one hit. The Goo Tuber also leaves a wider trail on walls and the ground, but it also sports a shorter range. So it may take a little while getting used to how far you need to be away from some of the salmonids. I give the Goo Tuber a wall paint score of 6 out of 10. The ink trails on the wall are wider, but it still doesn't exactly reach the bottom of the floor with fully charged shots. For maximum coolness, wall jump off the wall at the top of the tower to reach the end of the grate to get a little more range out of the Goo Tuber. Remember that the fish fry comes out before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Bye bye